Beloved, welcome back to the shop. Goodness, I've had one foot in the grave. What going on week four right now? I have been stricken with the worst man flu or whatever you want to call it. Some sort of a bioweapon probably from our filthy government, but they can't keep God's people down. But I've been on light duty, man. So we're back out at the shop today. We're going to tackle something that I've been putting off for some time. And that is this. Do you have a junk drawer? A place where everything goes to die that you don't want to deal with and then it compounds and compounds. Well, I've got a huge one over here and we're going to tackle that today. This will kind of be building on uh, what I can do now and going over the shop series on how to lay out shops and how to organize things. And boy, the urgency has come upon me when I think about all of the messes and chaos that I would leave my children as I uh, am laid low. (laughs) I don't want to be that guy. My dad, bless him, he, he did not see to his affairs and left us with a lot of stuff to deal with. So out of love to my family, if I'm not long for this world, I would like to get things sorted out. So we're going to go over that today and it might be a fun project. And well, let's let's dig in and we'll just deal with everything uh, the best we can. Before we get too carried away, let's get the fire going. I'm trying to keep it warm in here. That cold air puts me into a coughing fit that drops me to my knees. I know we've all got our own problems, don't we? How you doing, mama? You staying warm today? All right, let's tear into it. You doing okay, Mama? Yesterday I started a pretty ambitious project. This is my, I bought this, this is a Husky 300 two-stroke dirt bike. I bought this brand new in 2017. It's a TE300. It's the last of the carbureted bikes. And I've, you know, usually you don't keep dirt bikes very long. I've got over 800 hours on this. But I just like it so much. I've got it set up, and I, I just have always enjoyed it. it. It's been the best bike I ever had, and I, I keep considering, you know, selling it and, and getting a newer one and upgrading to the new technology. But the more I look at them, the more I'm less inclined to get one. A lot of um, they burn more fuel. They don't have a kickstart. The fuel injection has got all sorts of computers, and they're just so much more complicated that I decided. Well, yesterday. Rather than do that, I'll just take half the money of what it would cost to buy a brand new one. Well, a lot less because we you know once you buy one, it doesn't stop with that. You got to, of course, do suspension and, you know, you got, it's double the price. So you end up $20,000 into a bike. And I've already got this bike custom tailored perfectly the way I like it. I'm just going to rebuild it. So I took everything apart and went over everything and going to re-bearing everything. It's got brand new clutch, brand new top end I put on it. The engine's super solid. So it's just a matter of bearings and just bits and bobs. I got new brakes on it. So this will be a fun project. So I went last night, I went through and ordered up all the bearings and all the new replacement parts. And I've got that stuff will be trickling in through the rest of the week. I'm going to send, send the suspension back out to have that um, gone through. That's one thing I don't do. I do everything on the bike except for the suspension. That's something I don't fool with. That's some witchcraft and wizard that Proho does not understand at all. So if you see this stuff here all laying around, that's why um, I'll just be working on that. So I'll, I'll share that with you as well, the restoration of that. But let's get to the drawer. For a little background or to pick up where we left off, this is my work area. This is where I do work. I work on anything from tractors to watches to motorcycles. You know, this is this is where I like to work, especially in the winter time. And I have uh, my main tools in, in the roller, roller box, and then I took a snap-on box I bought used and just built it in uh, to a cabinet space right there. And everything's very well organized except for this one top drawer, which is just a place that I throw stuff that you know, for unfinished projects. And that's always bothered me. It's gotten so full now that I can't really even close the drawer. So this will be... You know, people ask me, how do you keep your shop so organized? And it really comes down to two things. Nothing goes on flat counter spaces unless you're working on it. You don't, that's not for storing junk and everything has a place. It doesn't do you any good. And this is what I would do in the past is I would try to organize it. I would, it was like squeezing a balloon where, you know, you squeeze one portion and it expands over somewhere else. Just because you remove something from one location and put it to another, that doesn't solve the problem. That just relocates junk to another area. So what I finally had to do is, is to realize that Everything, if, if I'm going to take something out and it doesn't have a place, a place needs to be created for it. It needs to be dealt with. And that's what 
happens at the junk drawer is all those unfinished projects, well, I'll just throw it here, just throw it there. And so it's not just a matter of organizing it. It's a matter of this is going to force you to have to deal with and finish a lot of unfinished projects. So cleaning out a junk drawer like this is not something we, we could probably even do in one video. So where I start is when you're organizing your shop is look at categories. Okay, let's put the hammers, the screwdrivers, the fasteners, the electrical stuff, put it all in their respective piles, and then take a look at it and ask yourself, do I need this? And if the answer is no, get rid of it. A lot of those things we carry around that we just don't need. Or is there duplicates? Do I have, do I need 14 number two screwdrivers? No, pick the ones that you want, pick the best ones, move them on, sell them on eBay, give them to someone that's in need, and just kind of look at it that way. And then everything has a place. So when you're done with the project, you, you know, you take your tools out, you put them on the work area that's clear. You don't have to move a bunch of stuff because you're using your flat surfaces for storing. You can work on your project, then everything gets put away in its spot. That really is the trick. Less things and then a home for everything. Oof. <laughs> All right, let's break it down to categories. Uh, we'll just put little piles. Now, this is the way I do my shop too. P piles of common things, and then we can take a look at what we have, <laughs> and then uh, start eliminating and finding homes for everything. This is going to be a, a microscopic version of the, the same technique that you're going to use uh, for uh, getting your shop sorted out as well. We'll start by getting together all of the plugs and oil filters, get those categorized. There's no reason why we need to have multiples of those in the primary drawer I use, so we can put that into long-term storage. Next, we'll gather up all of the, I would call, I guess, tools. I don't know why I've got tools spread out. I like to keep tools in one location. I don't need them in multiple locations. If you're going to, for example, you're going to go need air tools, go to where the air tools are. Keep them all in one location, not multiples. I pulled out all the oil filters and tools. A lot of this stuff are specialty things, you know, some mountain bike things mixed in with uh, dirt bike things and you know like slack tool which I only use uh, maybe once a year so let's start with the filters I have a let, let's go put those in stock there's no reason why I need to have oil filters 10 oil filters in a drawer when I can't I should put them back there in the stock with the spark plugs these are all KTM 450 and then spark plugs for pretty much everything I most all my dirt bikes hondas cowies 300s and the 450s and the 350. here's a handy tool right here you ever see one of these if you if you like to carry an extra plug on your two stroke you want to protect these and they make these cases which fit into a i must have pulled that's a used one there i'm gonna throw that out i'll put a new one in there but it's a good way to protect that insulator you can throw it in a, in a bag i keep mine in my air filter box and then you don't have to worry about uh uh, getting it damaged. It's so easy to forget what you what plugs are what. I'm going to go ahead and label them here. So I got in the habit of doing that recently, but I got a bunch of stuff that I don't know what it is. So I'm going to have to waste time looking it up. So, so what I'll do is I'll just write on here. These are for the TE 300. Get a new plug in there. I must. I think I swapped that out on a ride, and I put the old one in here for an emergency. Is that she used two. Oh, goodness. All right, get rid of that junk. I'm keeping old spark plugs. And then this will go back in my emergency kit for this summer. Start with a... See that insulator there? Or that whatever you call that little... I forget that. That that can get bent and get out of gap and it won't work. So this... Does that not fit? No. This fits perfectly. I'll put this back in the stock with the filters and the oil. Certainly doesn't need to be in our junk drawer. Okay, we'll just keep all filters back here and then spark plugs. I've got those collected over here. I don't need three tape measures. In the shop, I usually like to have a 16 footer, a 30, 25, 30 foot. That's fine for construction, but you rarely need one bigger than that. So I'll put these over on my construction box and then we'll keep just the one in here. This drawer here is kind of turned into one for, where do you put a tape measure? 
for uh, this sort of thing. It's a little bit deeper. Uh, specialty, more tools for bikes and stuff. I think a lot of that stuff can kind of go in here. I can open up this drawer and everything that's related to mountain bikes or dirt bikes uh, is going to be in this drawer. A lot of these tools are things I keep on my dirt bike that I take out of the tool kit when I go to snow bike because not having wheels and tires, you know, you have completely different needs. So this should probably go in the dirt bike pack. Um, and the only things here, tire repair kit, tire bars. So these, yeah, this here, I'll just keep this in my pack. Well, here's a cool tool. So they make these combination tools. You got a 27 for the axle nut. It's, it's every, all the wrenches you would need on one for a bike. So I'm always trying to conserve space. Most ProMotion, so ProMotion makes this little, it's a, an adapter that fits perfectly in a KTM rear axle nut. And now you've got a 3 8 drive. It's not a ratchet, it doesn't ratchet, but it's all, you know, you can get by with it. So you've got, you can put, um, there's the female side there, male side there, and just a really good lightweight space saver. So you don't have to carry a big heavy duty ratchet. So I'm gonna put this in my dirt bike bag. I've got my dirt bike bag emptied out because most of the contents, it goes back and forth between snow bike and dirt bike. But spark plug, you know, I don't, need, I don't have a two stroke, air repair kit, this sort of thing. That way, when I transition, it will go back and everything will be there. I should have done that in the first place. These are high pressure pumps for suspension where you need to put up, what do you got to put in there, like 300 PSI. So those are, that's the only way I have to get that pressure that high. So let's... We got air chucks and tools. Let's put this over in the in the air drawer, the service tool or the shop tools. Tire stuff and air stuff we've put down here. This perfect example of why I don't like having things in multiple locations. Like I didn't even know that I had this. This is a little combo tool for cleaning up, you know, removing Schrader valves and stuff. I would have never even known it was in there when I needed it. That's why I like the idea of everything that's air related tire related put it in one spot pumps compressors do i need another inflator looks like i don't even have one there digital gauge i've got this nice shop gauge but i'll keep these in here uh, in case i need to throw one in the truck these are gonna these skinny wrenches are gonna be for mountain bikes 16 18 combo that's garbage. Uh, 15, you know, these, you, you know, to tighten bearings and stuff. Well, we got a 15, 13. Here's what you do with these. All these, I used to save all these things. You know, you get these loose wrenches. <laughs> well, those are torques. Those are kind of handy to have. I might throw those in Jack's kit. But the rest of this stuff, these random Allens and stuff and these free wrenches, I know exactly where they're going to go in the future. Those go in the garbage. I have saved those for years. Everyone saves them. I'm not saving them anymore. I've got Allen wrenches. I've got dedicated wrenches. I don't need that random garbage. I'll keep these. We'll put these in with the uh, shop tools. These are something I'll use occasionally. I'm never going to use these. They're both the same. Goodness, these go in the round pile. Never in my life use those. These are dedicated eight and 10 millimeter nut drivers. This is the most standard size I'm always working with on the bikes. I had these out because I was gonna put them on my impact drivers and put, just keep them always there so I could just grab. I, I end up not using them because I don't, they're, they're not set up. So let's get, let's change the way we do this. I've got a pair of these little M12, these little impact guns. These guys have these nice little clips on the side. So I'm just gonna store these right here. And then I can just always have a grab and go eight and 10. That's gonna speed up my work a lot. And I'll just dedicate those to the cart. This is a tool I use for adjusting my chain on my 300 and that will go on the race cart. This is a brush I use for cleaning my chain and usually those two to go together. So that is a good spot for that. This is a spark plug wrench for the KTMs. I think this is was supposed to be in Jack's kit. So that goes in his tool kit. This is a set of pliers that came with my Husky and the factory tool kit that I modified here. Actually, here's a little pro tip that is really, really handy. Uh, on these, 
When you have a master link on a chain, getting this clip off can be very difficult. Breaking a chain out in the middle of nowhere can be a huge problem, and so I carry a spare master link. It's always recommended. I just drill a couple holes. This is the hand guard on my handlebars. And what the, the trick is you take a pair of these flat nose pliers like this. If you look close, you'll see that I've ground off one end a little bit shorter than the other. Well, this just works magic when you're trying to get these clips off. These clips, focus, focus here. These clips can be very difficult to get off because of the two different thicknesses. So you put the long end, you put that, the long end of your pliers there as you hook onto that pin, it, it reaches down there and is able to, now you, when you can squeeze that and it catches it, it doesn't keep slipping off. So just, just modify a cheap pair and this really works the trick. It's a real, it's a hand, it's a real racer trick. This should go in the plier drawer, even though it's a specialty tool. The, the, I, the principle is, or the idea is, is that everything in one spot, every plier that I own is here. If I come here and I don't have it, then I don't have what I need. It's not hidden somewhere else in multiple locations.